if people have a right to know about this stuff. I mean, if, if there are 15-footers or 18-footers ro roaming the planet and our military has brought them down, I mean, we have a right as American citizens. I mean, this isn't classified military stuff. This is something that we need to know, and it points back to the biblical prophetic narrative. What are your thoughts on that? I think, uh, here's, here's my personal opinion. My personal opinion is if it points that the Bible is accurate, they don't want it. Uh, if it goes against our and evolution, it's not to be spoken of. In Loja province, southern Ecuador and Peru border, many strange relics have been uncovered. Bones and full skeletons very similar to those of humans but of incredible size. These artifacts have been watched over for many years by several guardians in the beautiful valleys of that province. By far the most famous and well-known of these guardians was Father Carlos Miguel Vaca, who guarded until his death in 1999, several bones and fragments, unearthed from a site called Chanaminas which translated means God's Cemetery. Several fragments were redirected to the Smithsonian Institution of the United States of America, for people to study their density, age, weight, etc. Picture. This was broadcast on a television program for Ecuador, which lasted two hours, led by renowned director Alfonso Espinosa de los Montros. Now some pieces from that collection have been shown to the world by renowned UFO researcher Klaus Donia. Picture. Several other important relics and fragments are known to be in private collections, by people who are not interested in sharing them, at least not with the public. Picture. From the aforementioned fragmented skeleton, Seven fragments were studied by different scientists and anatomists, and they have confirmed that they are part of a human skeleton that was seven times the size of a modern human. Quartz formations poor aside aids covering the surface of the bones indicated that the relics were tens of thousands of years old. Come viral. The fact that this giant had six fingers and six toes, as well as flaming red hair. There was also a stench that was as powerful as a skunk but according to the shooter, smelled more like a pile of rotting corpses. Here's the clip, and you can decide for yourself if giants are alive and well and living in the present day. You were in Afghanistan in 2002, and you were called into a very remote section of Afghanistan because a patrol um, had basically gone missing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. There's no no, we just ran around nothing for miles. miles. Right. So very very remote. remote. Yeah, very remote. So we flew in. It's about four clicks, kilometers. We're hiking through the same area where they were supposed to make one of their checkpoints, you know, one of their rally points. And before we'd left, there was all kinds of what happened with the ambush. But that was even odd because at point of ambush, you'd call for maybe close air support or something. Okay. okay. There was no calls made. You just off the, off the bridge. So we're coming down a, a mountainside, and it was a nice, nice path, goat path. As we bent around this corner, you could see this opening of the cave. There's a cave as we're coming around. And then I see there's a lot of rocks, which is another oddity, and then bone matter. When I'm not close enough to identify what kind of bones, but I did see something I knew was a piece of our communications equipment. So instantly, we're thinking ambush, maybe animal, you know, it could be anything. And there was enough room in front of this cave, but it had a sheer drop off. But there was enough room that we actually got into a, a decent dispersal in case of ambush. You see something coming out of the cave, and it's moving with a speed and agility that catches you off guard. Everybody. Everybody. And he comes out. <laughs> It was a man at least 12 to 15 feet in height. This is a monster. Red beard, then his hair was longish past the shoulder. A scarlet red, and Dan runs at him and starts shooting, which broke all of us into the reality. Because it was so now, now your training is kicking in. Oh yeah, okay. muscle memory. Right. Complete muscle memory. While Dan is moving at him, another bro of mine's laying down fire and I start firing. He skewers Dan. He's now got him on this pike. It went through him. And he's still got him. And he's coming after more. We all just clicked in. I don't know what it was, but I remember we're all like, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. 
weapons components were M4, we had 308s, and we had Barrett 50s. This is sounding longer than it took. We're talking 30 seconds. And he's taking multiple hits and is still moving. He talked about this giant being 1,100 pounds, anywhere from 10 to 15 feet long, uh, and it was killed. It was uh, apparently shot uh, somewhere in a cave in Afghanistan, uh, and, uh, but before it was shot, it lunged at uh, several of our troops, our soldiers, it may have even gorged somebody. Uh, it was just a bizarre, bizarre story. And it just sounds like the Nephilim from the Bible, doesn't well, I, it? I, we, that's why we're so fascinated by this. First off, can you imagine actually seeing something like this? A giant this big who's 12 feet to 15 feet tall. Take a good look at your ceiling. It's probably about 8 feet from the floor. Add another 4 feet on top of that to get 12 feet. Add 7 feet and you get a 15 footer. And as you go up, you've got to go out. That's how big this thing was. I can only imagine how the shooter and his battle buddies must have felt and the fear that flashed through their minds, paralyzing them until their training kicked in and they brought the giant down. But not before the giant had impaled Dan on that very large pike. And you have to assume that the giant is not alone, that the giant is not the only being living on this planet. There's got to be a whole school of them somewhere. Uh, you know, maybe he's got a female uh, mate. Maybe he's got children. Who knows? Um, unfortunate that uh, he had to attack our soldiers rather than uh, be somewhat peaceful. But uh, I guess that comes with the, uh, with the territory. Dan was dead. Okay, and uh, why is a good man, probably one of the best men I know, now dead? Before I'd left, they were already starting what they call a nine line, which is a medevac request. They're sending out a medevac request, then all of a sudden it's not a medevac request. All of a sudden we had a helicopter show up because like I told you, it was a large precipice and a sheer drop. So the helicopter just came up from the drop. They had dropped netting, which is like uh, cargo netting. It's like squares. We were told we had to bundle him up. And we get another bigger helicopter, but it's almost like a jolly green giant used to look back in the day that could get, you know, through this area. Because the mountains, you gotta remember, Chinooks could only go in certain places because they had enough lift. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got him on there. The thing was too big, we couldn't move it. It smelled worse than a skunk. A corpse that's been around for a while really fell. Oh, it was like a combination because of the, how do you put that, the persistence of a skunk smell, but once the helicopter came in, dropped its little hook, and off he goes. The communication was sent out that we had a very large possible human creature. There you are in the, the hills of Afghanistan, uh, how many troop members are you with? We had uh, six on my crew. Uh, and when we say hills of Afghanistan, uh, for us, we did not fly into the wilderness. We actually flew into a base. Uh, I guess this thing was transloaded out of the uh, mountains by a CH-47. But I could see that it did have the six fingers. I remember taking my foot up and placing it up next to its foot, and it was extremely large. We estimated at about 12 feet, give or take. Uh, what I can tell you is the weight of the thing, basically, it was approximately 1,500 pounds when it was getting on the aircraft. Now, if you take away the pallet weight and all the rigging that we had to uh, hold this thing down, we figured it was around uh, 1,100 pounds. Of course we're upset. That's a given, okay? We lost a very good guy. But add to that, <clears throat> you're discussing something that even in our after action report, they're saying, rewrite it. And we had to rewrite it the way they wanted. How, how many fingers? Six, oh, six, 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 six fingers toes, and six, six toes. toes. And the nails were weird because if you see somebody that ever has, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like, like a fungus, a, on, fungus the on the nails, how they get pointy and they're like gnarly. That's, that's what they look like. As we showed you in the clip, the radio operator checked in and gave the report. 
and the unit was told to stand by as Central Command was about to dispatch two helicopters to them. They were told that the giant would be loaded on one of the choppers and then they would follow in the other chopper for debriefing. The shooter told us that when the chopper landed, they loaded the giant into a very large cargo net. The first chopper towing a giant left and then they boarded the second helicopter and followed. When they returned to their base in the Kandahar province in Afghanistan, they were debriefed and told to keep all of this under wraps. They were forced to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which essentially would prohibit them from talking about this to anyone. It is with great reluctance on the shooter's part that he has come forward. He believes that people have the right to know what is going on this planet, that the supernatural is real, and that the startling and unsettling fact that a remnant of a legendary Nephilim are still on the earth may be true. While the shooter's story is certainly fantastic, it does corroborate Stephen Quayle's account that he published years before. If people have a right to know about this stuff, I mean, if, if there are 15-footers or 18-footers ro roaming the planet and our military has brought them down, I mean, we have a right as American citizens. I mean, this isn't classified military stuff. This is something that we need to know, and it points back to the biblical prophetic narrative. What are your thoughts on that? I think, uh, here's, here's my personal opinion. My personal opinion is if it points that the Bible's accurate, they don't want it. Uh, if it goes against our winning evolution, it's not to be spoken of. But let me read it. It says this. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children unto them, the same became the mighty men which are of old, men of renown. Now, there are two uh, opposing viewpoints on this. During about the 4th century uh, uh, A.D., the, the Catholic Church basically said, well, no, these were the sons of Seth. And the sons of Seth married the daughters of Cain, and out of good men marrying bad women came giants. We're talking about men, uh, George, that had six fingers, six toes, and double sets of teeth. Now, that's kind of interesting, because all through the digs in North America, especially in Catalina in California, Lompoc, where there's a prison in California, they found red-haired giants. 10 to 12 feet tall, double sets of teeth, six fingers, six toes. You go to South America, and uh, the Mayan uh, god Shambachlum had six fingers, six toes. And so I believe there is a supernatural element. And then you've got writers who claim that we were created by the aliens, uh, the Anunnaki. And I, I obviously I don't believe that. I believe that all the myths of history center around this one thing, that basically supernatural beings had sex with earth women and produced giants. And it's a it's in the Bible, it's in Genesis six, Jude six, Second Peter, but more than that, and in addition to that, it's all through history. So you believe that these giants are the offspring of uh, fallen from, angels. Fallen angels from way gone back. Well from way gone back. And wow. it gets into the interesting thing. You know, if we go into let's say Greek mythology, we've got satyrs, and satyrs was a goat like body, a human torso and ram's horns. Yes. We've got centaurs, head and torso of a man, lower half of a horse, cyclops, giants with one eye in the center of forehead. And by the way, two months ago in Indonesia there were actual cyclopean skulls found, one eye, giant, and immediately the standard, if you will, anthropolo anthropological community came out and said, oh, these are just basically uh, calcified remains of a normal skull. Uh, we've got tritons, mermaids, minotaurs, uh, chimeras, or chimeras, and it's interesting because there's actually a patent now with the U.S. Patent Office that combines human DNA and animal DNA. So when we've got a supernatural element inserted into the equation of, in essence, fallen angels even having sex with animals, and by the way, this is ancient Sumerian text, it's ancient Babylonian text. This is something that is through history. It begins to explain a lot of where the myths came from. Let's get into Genesis if we can without the biblical uh, and religious twist to it. Sure, but I'm really... talking about it from a historic aspect. Exactly, exactly, and, and let you interpret some of this for us because it is there for people to read and you've been able to pull that out when you have written about it in your, in, in your book. Uh, b but it is there, and it has gone on since the beginning of time here, hasn't it? It has, and you know, it's interesting because, again, 
you know, the, the, you basically you have from from just the Genesis account of of these of fallen angels having sex with Earth women, producing again a a race of of incredible people. You know, everybody's heard of David and Goliath, yes. but what they don't know is they can they that Goliath had you know four brothers, and these guys all had six fingers, six toes. There's a guy named Og, O-G, not a hard name to remember, and some scholars place him at 18 feet tall. So from the <laughs> Genesis account in the Old Testament, through all of the history, uh, or excuse me, the historical accounts, through the different uh, continents, whether you're dealing with South America, whether you're dealing with North America, the Europeans, the Asians, the Australians, the Greeks, everybody has got their records, their bones. And, you know, interestingly enough, the Aztecs, and there was a lot of chronicling of the Aztecs by different uh, Spaniards that followed, especially uh, their priests that followed the conquistadors. And basically, the Aztecs said their entire civilization was built by giants. Tiwanaku in Bolivia, up by Lake Titicata. The point is, is that uh, they're, 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 they have fantastic architecture that still no one can explain. Baalbek, the giant cities of ba B A S H A N, Bashan, which were called the cities of the giants. So I'm talking about a time period when there were some really big guys. And see, in in classic uh, uh, anthropology, in classic archaeology, this stuff is basically taboo. They won't deal with it. And it's fascinating because when you go even to uh, 1905 in the Phoenix Gazette, there are there are actual full front page stories about a gentleman. Uh, from the Smithsonian named Kincaid, who actually found uh, caverns with giant statuary from uh, Egypt, etc. And when people have tried to investigate, David Hatchett, Childress, and others,